Hi, I'm the Rick in Rick Turns, and I'm here to talk about friction polish again. How to use it and how to abuse it. Well, maybe how not to abuse it. <laughs> yeah. Friction polish. First of all, how do we use friction polish? If you've ever used it before, I'm sure you know, it's pretty darn simple. Now, the first thing to remember about friction polish is always shake it up. It only takes a couple of minutes for the shellac and the oil to separate out. And it'll be real obvious when that happens. Uh, you'll see a very clear definition between the two. Uh, kind of a amber liquid up here and then a shellac -y blonde liquid down here. So for applying friction polish, I always use a paper towel. And because I'm incredibly cheap, I use half of a paper towel. And I just fold it up into a small very small pad like this. So I've got about four layers of paper towel there. And incidentally, for paper towel, I would definitely suggest you get one that doesn't have any printing on it. Uh, I don't think it would happen, but you don't want to take any chance on having the, the ink from a paper towel bleed off into your wood piece. This is a piece of walnut. I've sanded it from 150 all the way down to 1,000 grit which is the fin finest sandpaper that I have on hand. And so what I'm going to do now is just put on the friction polish. Now I've seen this done in several ways. The way I do it is to just wipe it on while the lathe is off for the first coat only. And the reason I usually do this, because if there's any uh, beads in here or any other kind of figuring you've done, uh, it can be difficult to get the polish when it's just kind of soaked into the cloth uh, into those little grooves, into the little edges of it. So that's why I, I put mine on initially with the lathe off. And once it's on there, I put on some more polish. Not much, just about that much. I stand back because it's going to uh, spit up off the workpiece initially. I've got my lathe going at about 2700 RPM and so I just put on another layer of friction polish on top of what I just did. And I'm actually putting a lot of pressure on here, <laughs> enough to, uh, to burn my hand there, or enough to be uncomfortable. But that's where the friction and friction polish comes from. So there we have it. This is one, or if you want to count it as two coats of friction polish. It looks fairly good. I'm going to give it maybe 15 seconds to uh, to settle or to harden or to whatever. And then using the same place on the same piece of paper towel, a little more flick friction polish, not very much this time. Same thing. Yow. Hot. Okay, watch out for the heat. I doubt that it shows on camera, but this, with the third or second coat, depending on how you're counting, finish of friction polish is definitely shinier than the first. So I'm going to call this the second coat. Um, and giving it just a moment to uh, harden a little. Notice right up here, this is still the unfinished wood. That's deliberate. I left it that way to show it. All right, let's uh, put on a little more friction polish. Once again, in this case, just it's really uh, only a very small amount. Turn the lathe back on, and here we go. Yo. And I think that does look even better. Although sometimes it's hard to tell. So this is about three coats of polish. And take a look at the applicator here. You can see it's got kind of a kind of a semi-hard coating on it now. This is the solidified shellac and oil and so forth. And after it's heated up, it kind of uh, glosses over a little bit. And that's really what you want to see. You don't want to take your, your applicator uh, rag off of here and see that it's still wet. You want to see that it's, it's got that 
little shine where it's solidified some. All right, that's three coats. I'm going to put on one more just for kicks. A little bit more polish. Once again, it's not very much. Okay, so that's about four coats, and I can't really see much difference between this coat and the previous coat. How many coats on it uh, you want to apply? Well, that's questionable. Building up more coats uh, might give it a more of a, a uh, deep finish look. Although I put on up to eight coats before and didn't really notice that much difference. So let's try one more coat and see what happens. Just a little bit. So this is number five. And uh, you know you're doing it right when your fingers get hot. Now, of course, if you use a thicker pad, that might not be noticeable. And let's take a look at that. Looks about the same to me. Uh, it's got a nice high gloss shine on it, which is what I'm looking for. So that's the basic application of friction polish. Now, let's see. Let's work on this piece right here. I just want to try something here. Just wiping the dust off at the moment. Okay. Going to, uh, I think I'll get a fresh piece of paper towel. As in this. So what I'm going to do now is apply it with the lathe running. And you know, I've seen uh, a number of turners online YouTube videos and everything, they just drip it on while the lathe is running. So I'm going to try that out. Uh, I don't typically do it that way. All right, shake it up. Lathe. Now you definitely want to stay out of the way of it because it's really, it's going to splatter there. Once again, you got to get the heat on your fingers. Let's take a look. And that is a very nice shine. Really, it's about the same shine as over here. Maybe not quite as bright. So I'm going to try one more coat. All right, let's have a look at that. It looks great, just like this side does. As I said, I don't put it on while the lathe is running because I don't think it's really going to get down into the little crevices around beads and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, you've got a tapered dispenser point like this. You can just, while the lathe is running, squeeze it right in, into that bead and uh, get good coverage that way. Uh, so overall, I think you can apply it either way you want to. Uh, put it on while the lathe is running, or put it on with the lathe stopped for the first coat. And then for subsequent coats, put it directly on the paper towel and wipe it on. Or for subsequent coats, just drip it on just like uh, I did on this side. Either way seems to work really, really good. I've sanded this side with 150, 240, and 320 grits of sandpaper. On this side, I sanded it with these three grits, but I also sanded with 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. So this side is sanded much, much higher than this side. <coughs> now, I'm going to put friction polish on here, and we'll see what actually happens here. Theoretically, this side should be a better finish than this side. Friction polish, already separated. Shake it up. Put it on my applicator and wipe it on. And make sure it's all covered there. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Now, this side had about maybe 20 or 30 seconds to dry. I'm going to let that dry out a little bit. Flip my applicator cloth over so I've got a reasonably 
clean surface. It's actually kind of dirty, but hey. All right, that's long enough. Now I'm going to apply friction polish all over the whole piece. Got a little bit of polish on there. Hot. Okay. Uh, it may not show on the camera, but I can definitely tell a difference between here and here. Although this one still shined up, but it does not have the shine that this side has, and that's only one coat of polish. So, more friction polish, one more coat. Start on this side this time to even things up. And that's hot. All right, compare the two by siding along it to look for the shine. This side is definitely better. Not content to leave well enough alone, I'm gonna put on one more coat. And check it once again. This side has a good shine. This side has a great shine. So, the, uh, rule of thumb that I've read of sanding it very fine to get a high shine, I'm pretty sure that's true. This side was only sanded to 320, this side was sanded to 1000, and it's a better shine. But keep in mind, this is still a pretty good shine and you may not want to fool around with all the extra sanding. Okay, for my next test, I want to take a look at slow speed versus high speed. Do you put the friction polish on with the lathe running high, very fast, or very slow. Now, Captain Eddie recommends slow, and I've seen a number of people in videos doing it slow. Uh, my first experience with friction polish, the instruction said, apply it with a lathe at high speed. So, what I'm gonna do here, this side is gonna be slow speed, this side is gonna be high speed. I've got the lathe set on about 2900 at this point. So I'm going to put on the high speed first. Got the same applicator I've been using, paper towel. My friction polish, which I've already stirred up to make sure it's good, okay. And just like I always do, I'm going to apply it with uh, the lathe off. Alright, I've got even coverage over the whole piece, so now and I put a little bit more on here and put on the first coat. Go. And as always, I put it on until my fingers burn. All right, well, that looks good for a first coat anyway. So, one more time. Second coat. Okay, plenty hot. Second coat looks really good. I'm going to stop there. Now for my next test on the slow speed, first I'll uh, adjust the lathe. Let's see what my slow speed is. Down at about 400. 400 speed on this side. Uh, fresh cloth, more or less fresh anyway. Stir this up. And first I put it on with the lathe turned off. All right, that's, uh, that's got everything coated. All right, good. Now, a little more friction polish. Turn it on slow. All right, I got a good coat on there. No streaks, anything like that. Looks very nice. So, as I did with this side, I'm going to put on a second coat. Okay, now I never got the, uh, the applicator up to, uh, to being hot. Not even warm, actually. But this looks real good. So the difference I see between 
high speed and low speed is, I think, uh, the length of time it takes to get it on. This one I spent less time polishing. This one took more time polishing than this side. And, you know, at the moment, the high speed side does not look quite as shiny as the low speed side. So low speed might actually be better. I'm not sure. I'm going to go back to the high speed side and polish it some more at high speed. We'll see. Okay, that's about 2700. This piece is still just very slightly damp. I'm going to go ahead and just buff this a little more. All right. Okay, so this got some extra buffing. It's still, you know, it's still not quite as shiny as the low speed side. Well, that surprises me because it appeared to go on better on the, I mean, it appeared to result in a better shine on the low speed side. But the difference is very, very small and it probably doesn't even show in the video because I am having to, uh, get my head right down to it and get a reflection off of here to see about the shine. But this one's still a little bit higher than the low speed side. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. All right, well, let's go on to the next test. My next test is going to be the type of applicator you use. I've got a fresh piece of uh, a paper towel here, and I've got a piece of, uh, I think these were probably at one time, lightweight blue jeans, but it's sort of denim, not real heavy denim. And I want to check and see, does the applicator make any difference? Because I did read one comment on a manufacturer's site that uh, you don't want to use uh, uh, applicators that have a real strong weave because it will leave marks on the surface. Now this doesn't have much of a weave, and this has a little bit of a weave. I, it may not be harsh enough uh, for this test, but I'm going to try it out. So, this side is going to get paper towel. This side is going to get denim rubbing. Shaking this up, put a little on here, and rub it in with the lathe off. Turn the lathe on. That's a nice shine. Now I'm going to put in another coat. Okay, good shine. Back to my pseudo denim here, whatever it is. And uh, put a little polish there and wipe it on thoroughly. Okay, it's on all over it. First coat of polish. Looks good. Don't don't see any marks in it. Second coat of polish. And that looks good. And this looks good. Once again, this side looks a little bit better. I'm wondering if it's because this side has its chance has had a chance to, to dry out a little bit more. So I'm going to wait a couple of minutes and uh, then we'll recheck the results. Yeah, it's been a couple of minutes and uh, there's no real difference. This side is just a little bit duller than this side, I think. So I want to check one thing out with that. It's possible that this side of the wood is not taking polish as well as this side. That seems really unlikely but I think I can eliminate it by polishing again with this rag. If the rag is a difference, it should come out as bright as this. A little bit of polish. And that was a lot of pressure. I think this side is just as bright as this side. 
So it may be that a rag instead of a paper towel is a better applicator. This is a fairly limited test here and there's not very much difference anyway between the two sides. For this test I want to test the uh, the effect of, of putting a lot of pressure on it uh, to see if that makes a difference in the, the final result. Now, I noticed when I did the slow speed test versus the high speed test uh, on the slow speed side which was right here I really got a terrific finish maybe even a little bit better than this side and uh, even though I put a lot of pressure on it I never really built up much heat there maybe a little bit but not nearly the side I get at a high speed so for this test I'm going to do I've put the lathe on slow back on slow it's back on 400 and on this side I'm going to do uh, high pressure and this side I'm going to do low pressure and we'll see what difference it makes okay I'm going to use paper towel applicator again I've got my polish shaken up put some on here and just like I've done before I'm gonna put it on by hand for the first coat make sure I get good coverage not really an issue when you, you've got a piece like this that has uh, no beads or any kind of detailing into it but I want to be consistent for the whole test all right it's got a good coverage there got to put a little more on my applicator slow speed and this is going to be high pressure all right that was high pressure I got a a good shine I think one more coat a little bit more polish once again very high pressure from the very beginning to the end all right I got a nice shine on there switch to a clean piece of towel and this side is going to be low pressure low speed low pressure uh, low speed high pressure and put it on with the lathe off low speed no pressure beautiful shine all right one more coat great slop it all over no pressure well just enough to hold it up against the rotating piece there no pressure and not very much uh, length of time polishing and it looks great okay and we compare it to this side and it looks a little better than this side so I'm gonna take this side uh, put one more coat on at low speed and low pressure low speed high pressure it doesn't look quite as good low speed low pressure This might be an unfair test at this point this side only has two coats this size has three and okay that uh, I think I've got the same degree of shine on both sides interesting so it appears to me that uh, low pressure and, and no heat generated is given me a better surface or a better finish rather than uh, low speed and high pressure hmm let's put it up to uh, high speed and just put one more coat on and see what happens alright I'm back up to high speed so this is going to be high speed no pressure both sides which have already been very highly polished going to do low pressure again at high speed and let's take a look now just because of the high speed I did get some heat generated even at uh, even at low pressure well I think they're about the same I guess that's not too surprising 
while I've got this finish on here, you realize it hasn't even had a minute to solidify, but I'm going to do a wear test. I am going to put the lathe back down to low speed. All right, we're back down to about 400, and I'm going to run my hand over it just to simulate wear. Now, probably the items you're putting this on aren't going to get that much wear. So this may not be a valid test. Plus, since the finish hasn't had a chance to sit for an hour or a day, it may not be a valid test. So let's give it a try. I'm just going to hold it like this. Back and forth all along it. I can definitely feel some heat there. All right, the finish on both sides has dulled just a little bit. I guess that's not really too surprising. But it didn't dull significantly. It's only a little bit duller than it was before. So uh, I think uh, handling-wise, uh, friction polish is, is going to hold up fairly well. And, drip water on it or something, or especially alcohol. That's not the case, I'm sure. But just for normal handling, I think you can expect to, to keep a good shine on there. For this test, I want to test uh, basically polish that uh, has been uh, capped and not really allowed to evaporate, I hope, against polish that I have left sitting out. Now, this should be a little thicker. Some of the alcohol should have evaporated off. I've had it sitting in this cup for hours now. So this test is going to be to see whether uh, a more dilute solution uh, shines better or, or worse than a thicker solution. This side is going to get it from this bottle which uh, I don't believe, I keep it capped all the time, I don't believe it really has much chance to evaporate. Standard protocol for me, put it on with the lathe off first. Okay, that looks good. A little more polish on there. And I'm going back to burning my fingers. All right, looks good. One more coat. Ooh. That's hot. All right, nice shine. Now, this side is going to get the polish that's been sitting open for a while. And I'm going to stir that up without slopping it. I'm going to try and get just a little bit on here from the cup. Whoops, that's more than I wanted to get. I'm going to shake some of that off. I want to keep the conditions of the test the same. So, rub it on. Lay it off. is actually getting a good bit more polish so I'm not going to refresh the polish on here it's still pretty damp high pressure looks good a little more Okay, both sides look fantastic. I don't think I can see any difference at all on that particular test. Now, that may be because I've only had that polish sitting out for a few hours, and maybe, uh, maybe it hasn't evaporated enough to make a difference, or maybe it just doesn't make any difference. 
but I'm going to call it at that. I don't want to wait another day to let it sit out overnight. Um, but it certainly looks good right there. Okay, let me try and summarize what I've found out from this test, or what I think I found out from this test. First of all, how much polish is enough polish? Uh, I tried putting on too much polish. I really tried slopping it all over the place. And, and other than getting it sprayed all over my face uh, when I didn't move in time, I didn't see much difference between putting a very heavy coat on at once or putting a really light coat on at once. So uh, that would seem to say, you want to conserve your polish, just put on a, a little bit and you'll probably get better results. Or at least you'll probably not use up your polish as fast. Secondly, sanding. Uh, what degree of sanding is really necessary? Or not necessary perhaps, what degree of sanding is useful? Uh, in my sanding test, I sanded one side down to 320 and one side down to 1000. I could definitely tell a difference between the 320 and the 1000 side. The 1000 side was much better. Okay, do you put the uh, friction polish on at a low speed or at a high speed? As I mentioned before, uh, I always thought high speed was the way to go, but when I ran the test on this chunk of wood, the low speed did just as well and maybe better than the high speed. It was pretty close, uh, but it, uh, the low speed uh, did not seem to come up with an appreciably uh, poorer finish than the high speed did. Let's see. Applicator. I normally use paper towels, so I tried it this time with paper towels and a piece of not coarse woven cloth, but uh, also not really fine woven cloth. And I couldn't really tell, well, that was pretty hard to tell at that point. I, I, think the, uh, I think the cloth actually gave me a little bit better finish. But that could be due to other factors, the cloth not absorbing the polish quite as fast when you first put it on, or something like that. Uh, in any event, if you put it on with a cloth, it, it's a safety uh, issue right there, because if the cloth gets stuck up in here, uh, it's going to be whipping around and everything. As long as it's not attached to you, you're probably okay. Let's see. Pressure. Do you need to put a lot of pressure on it? Or is just a little pressure going to work? Uh, uh, hot versus cold, in effect. Because low pressure, you don't generate as much heat coming up. Uh, my conclusion on that, once again, it was very close. Uh, but I would say, really, that uh, a lot of pressure does not seem to be needed, even though it generates more heat. Now that may be because it doesn't take a lot of heat really to, uh, to set that polish. Uh, a little bit of heat generated from low pressure is going to work as well as uh, a lot of heat generated from high pressure. So I would say that's, that's kind of a, a draw there. And finally, putting on thick polish that has been sitting out for a while and putting on uh, basically fresh polish that hasn't been allowed to sit and evaporate. Um, eh, it's pretty hard to tell right there as well and, and I think uh, that may be that I just haven't I just haven't left my polish out open uh, long enough for a significant evaporation to occur. So I don't know the answer to that. Anyway, so there it is. Um, put it on fast or slow, put it on heavy, put it on uh, with a lot of pressure, put it on with a cloth, or put it on with a rag, put it on with a paper towel. Uh, basically, there are some differences, but not a lot. So, uh, you can probably put it on any old way you want to, and it's still going to look really good. <laughs> there were a few differences, and uh, I might change my polishing from high speed to low speed. So put it on any way you want to, <laughs> as long as you put it on. All right, see you next video.